My name's Sabrina Romanov, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a YouTube video and convert it into multiple social media posts using ChatGPT and Zapier. So first, let me show you how the automation works. So here is one of my YouTube videos, okay? So let's say I wanna turn this into a social media post. I've already filmed the video, and now I want to share this video on LinkedIn and Twitter. So first, I'm just gonna copy this URL here, and then I'm gonna to go to this website, Comb dot AI slash tools slash YouTube transcript generator. I'll paste the link to this in the video description. And what I'm gonna do is gonna open my Zapier Chrome extension. So here's where you can see some zaps that I've built. If you watched my previous video, I talked about how to take like an interesting article, newsletter, or a discussion thread and convert that into a social media post. For this video though, we're gonna use the YouTube transcript to social media post workflow here. So I'm gonna expand this workflow and it takes two inputs the YouTube video URL, so I paste that here, and then the transcript. Let me just hide the Chrome extension real quick so you can see what I did. So all I did is I pasted the YouTube video URL here, click generate, and then the transcript is done. Uh, it basically gets it automatically from the YouTube data API, uh, but I wanted to show you this approach so that you don't have to go through the hassle of like setting up your Google developer accounts, and um, setting up your YouTube data API and the permissions, and you don't, you don't have to do any of that. So here, you just click copy the transcript, open back up the Chrome extension. So here's the transcript, and then paste in the YouTube video URL. Scroll all the way down to hit send. So this will actually send it to Zapier now and kick off the workflow, okay? So now it's going to go through this whole workflow, and then you're gonna see the result added to my Google Sheet here. So it's gonna have a URL, date, the LinkedIn post, and the tweets uh, written by ChatGPT. There you go, you see it? Um, here's the YouTube URL. To get the title, uh, instead of calling the YouTube API, I just use ChatGPT to summarize the tweet into a one sentence title. Again, the way I'm trying to build this is to like minimize the amount of integrations and setup you need and cost. Um, so calling the YouTube API incurs a cost. Um, there are other ways also to get the YouTube transcripts, uh, services and stuff that all can transcribe all kinds of videos. But again, that incurs extra cost. Uh, just to give you an example, I was looking at one alternative. Um, they have really high quality speech to text transcription. The only problem is it's 25 cents per minute. So imagine like a 60 minutes YouTube video, you're gonna be paying for it to transcribe that or uh, it can transcribe any video. It doesn't have to just be YouTube by the way. So if you have an online class um, or a meeting in person that you recorded, uh, but the cost is kind of steep. So when I create these Zapier automations. I really try to think about how can I do this in a way that's cost effective, you know, because I know many of you, you know, want to watch costs, especially if you're just starting out with your business. So let's go back to the Google Sheet real quick. So here is the LinkedIn post it generated from my YouTube video. Um, and this is all correct. So my previous YouTube video was about taking an article and then creating a LinkedIn and and Twitter post out of it. So this post here like literally lays it out step by step pretty impressively. Um, and then here's a tweet it generated. I don't love like the way it's generating this tweet. So it is on my to-do list to improve the chat GPT prompt for uh, writing tweets. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the whole workflow. So again, you just kind of like find a YouTube video and then you go to this website, comb.ai, paste in the transcript here, click generate. Click copy and then post it into your Chrome extension over here. Boom, so put the URL here, copy the transcript here, and then click send. Okay, so let me show you how to actually build this automation out. So create a new Zap in Zapier, and then the first step is going to be this Zapier Chrome extension. The event is a new push. And so that Chrome extension over here, that's where we input the YouTube video URL and the transcript, and that's what triggered this whole workflow. Okay, and here are the input fields, YouTube video URL and transcript. So those are the boxes that you saw in the Chrome extension. Let me show it again here. So these are the input fields that the workflow takes. And then test it out. So once this test is successful, then you're gonna add an, another step, which is formatter by Zapier. So to find that, it looks like this, formatter by Zapier, okay? The event is text because we're working on the text transcript. 
And then for transform, you want to choose truncate, which limits the text to a specific character length. And then for the input, you want to feed in the transcript you pasted in the Chrome extension. So search for number one and then field transcript. And by the way, I rename each step so it's easier for me to read. So this won't be the name out of the box. You, you can rename it here by clicking the buttons and clicking rename. So this helps me keep track of like exactly what each step is for. Um, I set max length 200,000, which actually might exceed ChatGPT's limit. Um, this is in terms of character count, it might be closer to 100 or 120,000. Append ellipsis true. Okay, and then go ahead and test this step. The data in will look something like this, and then the data out will look something like this. Okay, and then the next step is ChatGPT. So go ahead and find that step in the zap. It looks like this. And then we're, you're going to select conversation, which sends a chat to open AI to generate a completion. Okay. And then you're going to have to connect your account. So hopefully you have a ChatGPT account already. If you don't, here's how to do it. You just click uh, here, then click connect a new account. And then you're going to get this pop up saying you need to paste your API key and organization ID. Now, if you don't know where to find those or you don't have one already, go ahead and click create an API key and it will take you exactly to your dashboard where you can create an API key and then go ahead and click organization ID, which will take you to where you need to go. Okay. So once you connect your ChatGPT account, um, I like to mention this data sent through the API will not be used to train or improve OpenAI's models. I know a lot of people have uh, concerns about that, so I do like to mention that here. Okay, and then for the user message, we're going to say input, and then we're going to take the output from step two, truncated text. Okay. So what this is saying is like, this is basically the prompt you're giving ChatGPT. Like here's the YouTube transcript, and then I'm gonna ask you to write social media posts from it. Um, I use GPT 4.0 for writing just because it's like significantly better uh, quality than the previous models. Okay, and then here are the assistant instructions, and this is where I put uh, the actual meat of the ChatGPT prompt. I don't know why, but assistant instructions just tends to work better for me than putting it in the user prompt. So that's what I do, but it'll, it'll work either way. So if you wanna copy all this and paste it into the user message here, that's fine too, it'll still work. Um, in terms of where to get this prompt, uh, so on my website, sabrina.dev, just click prompts at the top and you'll see like a bunch of prompts here. So go to four content creators. And then here's the prompt to write a LinkedIn post with bullet point sections. Okay. So you literally just copy and paste this whole prompt over here. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. And feel free to obviously tweak the prompt so that it's to your liking. I just happen to like posts that are, you know, well-structured, uh, with this, with this kind of template where it's like a key point, some point, some point, some point, uh, but that's really personal preference, right? So this is where you want to, uh, maybe show ChatGPT examples of your own voice, your own writing style. So it emulates that better. Okay. So for max tokens, I put 4096, which is, uh, I believe, the limit. Oh, it's actually 8192 for GPT-4. Uh, but that's okay. We don't really want a crazy long uh, LinkedIn post anyway. So 4096 is fine, especially because sometimes you might switch back and forth between GPT-4, GPT-3.5. Um, and so this is fine to leave as 4096. Temperature, usually you choose between zero and one. Higher the number, the more random, kind of like creative, um, almost hallucinatory the output might be. And then the lower the number, the more focused and de deterministic it is. Here, I just set it to 0.8, okay? So once you have everything set up there, go ahead and test it out. So the data should look in, should look something like this. You'll see like all the prompts we put in. And then the data out uh, should look something like this. Okay, so this is actually creating a LinkedIn post about Zapier because we fed it the Zapier website in the testing process. Okay, um, and then what we're gonna do is literally duplicate this step. Just click duplicate and then rename it. So this one's gonna be write LinkedIn post and then this step that you just created from duplicating it, this is gonna be write the tweet. And really the only thing you need to change is the prompt itself. So the assistance instructions. 
Um, and you can grab it from my blog as well. So I have, yeah, tweet.md here. This is taken from Daniel Meisler's Fabric GitHub repo. Um, and I think it's a good starting point, but it's just not my style in terms of writing tweets. And so it is on my to-do list to improve um, the tweet being generated, but I think it's a really great start. So go ahead and copy this into the system instructions. Set max tokens to something really low because it's a tweet, so you don't want it to be really long. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing you have to change uh, up to you t if you want to tweak the temperature. I, I do recommend playing around with this, like put it at zero and put it at one just to see the differences in the output because it, it really does make a difference. So once you're done with that, go ahead, click continue, test it out. And the output should be a tweet. So I'm just scrolling all the way to the bottom. So here's like an example tweet, which oh, I actually do like this tweet, except probably too many emojis like for my taste, but I do like the, t the tweet. So one thing here with this whole workflow is because we're kind of pasting in the YouTube transcript URL, uh, this Zapier workflow doesn't know the video title for the YouTube video. And like, obviously there are ways to get this, like I could call the YouTube API um, or use a Python script where there's a Python library that integrates with the YouTube API really nicely. Unfortunately, one of Zapier's primary limitations is even if you write Python code, you can't import external modules and libraries, which kind of sucks. And again, I don't want you to have to go and set up like your whole Google developer account just to access the YouTube API, just to get the title of the video, you know? And so what I'm doing here is I'm actually calling ChatGPT to summarize the tweet into a one sentence title. And this is the title that appears here in the spreadsheet. What you're gonna do is create a new ChatGPT, create a new step, select ChatGPT. And for the event, we're just gonna use Zapier's out of the box summarized text. That way you don't have to like copy in a prompt and change a whole bunch of things because this is just to generate the title in your spreadsheets. Okay, so connect your accounts. So here in the text to be summarized, you wanna select number four, write tweet, and then the reply. So this is the tweet that's uh, generated from step four. Uh, if you want the title to be based on the LinkedIn post instead, you can choose this. It just it just costs a little bit more because you're you're feeding in a bunch more text to ChatGPT. But if you want to specify something like your final summary should be one sentence long, maximum of twelve words, because we're using this as a title, so it's not it's not really a summary. It's a title. I'm just using 3.5 Turbo for this. Again, it's just the title that's going to go into this Google Sheet. It's not the actual social post. I put the temperature 0.4 because I don't want it to be like too creative it should represent what the content is about so once you're done with that go ahead and test it out and the data out should look something like this so literally just a simple one sentence title for what the video was about okay and then go ahead and click continue and then my last step personally for me i do not publish directly um, especially as I'm building my personal brand, I'm still kind of picky on like how I want things to be worded. I want to make sure like I'm adding my unique insight and perspective to the posts, right? But it really depends on your use case. If you want to publish directly to social media platforms, you definitely can. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Um, but for my use case, I like it. Uh, outputting to a Google Sheets where I can just kind of like see everything, make any final edits and then schedule the posts. Okay, so if you wanna do something similar, um, add a step, make, choose Google Sheets. We're gonna create spreadsheet row. Okay, connect your accounts and then choose the drive, choose the spreadsheet, choose the worksheet. And for the title, you're gonna grab it from step five, right? Step five is when we wrote the summary and select summary, okay? For the URL, we're actually gonna grab it from the first step uh, and then choose field YouTube video URL. So this is the YouTube video. Um, for dates, I just do for me zap underscore meta underscore. So how you type it out is like this. Uh, MST refers to my time zone, so that's why I use it. Um, if it doesn't matter to you the time zone, I believe this is the other command zap meta human now. Double curly braces zap meta human now. Okay. And then for the LinkedIn post, you wanna grab it from step three, write LinkedIn posts, scroll all the way down to get reply. Similarly for tweets, uh, go to step four, scroll all the way down and grab the reply. 
and go ahead and test it out. And you should see it populate in your Google Sheet like this. What's really cool, what I love about this workflow is that I don't have to like set up anything fancy to get the YouTube transcripts. I don't have to pay for an extra service. I don't have to like uh, maintain some Python code to get it. It's just really easy to do. You just go to this website, copy the transcript over here and then boom. And everything's free except for ChatGPT and Zapier, which hopefully you're, you're paying for already if you're using them in your business. If you do want to publish directly to social media platforms, you can. So uh, one of the reasons I love Zapier is because it has all of these out-of-the-box integrations, right? So choose LinkedIn, and then you can choose Create Share Update to publish directly to LinkedIn. Uh, there's a bunch of other social media apps as well. So if you want Facebook... Facebook pages here. So this will publish a post directly to your uh, Facebook page. And let's say you want to publish to your Instagram for business. Um, you can publish a photo to the feed uh, with some text on it. You might be wondering, oh, we didn't generate a photo. So another thing we can do is call OpenAI again to generate a photo. Select OpenAI as a step, then generate image with Dolly 3. Prompt will be the tweet, and then you can optimize the size for the social media platform. LinkedIn, the optimal size usually for images is like 1080 by 1350, I believe. Um, in, for, I'm not super familiar with Instagram or, or other social media platforms, but the cool thing is you can customize you know, the size of the image to match uh, and be optimal for each uh, social media platform. So yeah, a lot of different options. And if you use a social media management tool, for example, like Buffer, then you can kind of just add these things to your Buffer queues automatically. So yeah, a lot of options here with Zapier. That's kind of why I ended up choosing it out of all the AI agent builder platforms. There's just so many integrations out of the box that you can do stuff with, and it's, it's really powerful because you can whip the entire workflow from start to finish um, within a single zap. And you don't have to pay for like a bunch of extra tools. Um, obviously, there are agent builder platforms um, that are way more powerful in terms of chaining different LLMs together, chaining prompts together. For example, Taskade is one I'm exploring. Uh, Relevance AI is another one that's focused on sales and marketing customer service use cases. Stack AI is another one that's more focused on enterprise. Uh, the, the pricing isn't super friendly for uh, solopreneurs or creators. But just to give you examples, like this is kind of where AI agents are going. In my opinion, the biggest drawback across all of them is the lack of integrations to many other platforms. And so that's why I, I am really enjoying Zapier right now. As long as you have like very high quality prompts that you've worked on that reflect your brand, your voice, your style, uh, you can get very high quality outputs from, from these workflows. Um, and you can introduce like advanced patterns like agentic design, for example. Like I could introduce another step here and ask ChatGPT to uh, review the LinkedIn post that it just wrote, provide feedback on how to make it better. And then you could add, add a third ChatGPT step saying, take the feedback on the post, take the original post and apply the feedback to create a superior post. So there are all sorts of things you can incorporate even within Zapier that don't require you to go out of your way and try to use an AI agent builder platform. For and I'll show that in a future video. Um, for now, I just want to focus on workflows that are you know, actually useful to people, practical for daily use, affordable, um, don't require a lot of other tools and stuff. So thanks for watching. My name is Sabrina Ramanov. If you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, drop me a comment. I look forward to hearing from you.